Hey everybody, welcome to the Dano channel. I am Dano and I'm back again with another Veda vlog. In fact, it's still April 22nd. I'm not going to lie, I was going to cheat and be like, oh, it's another vlog day. Um, if you watched my last vlog, it was about a friend of mine dying. And I said at the end, I'm just going to finish up and walk home. I started walking home and I felt I didn't want to go home. In fact, I kind of wanted to keep talking, but not about the same thing. Uh, somehow my brain got on a tangent about dreams, things like dreams. Uh, and I was thinking about the weirdest dream I ever had. <laughs> now, it's weird because it's like a recurring dream. It was a dream I had multiple times. Now, again, I'm going to apologize for the noise. It is a little bit breezy out, so you might get some of that <sighs> sound. There's like a weird air thing next to me. I am right in the path of a runway. There's like an airport not far away, so there will be planes coming overhead probably very soon. I can see them way back there. There's lights. They're going to be coming soon, so I'll try to not so much walk in that path. But now that all that's cleared and you know what to expect, the not so good quality. I'm not in my studio. I'm walking around the neighborhood where I live. Because uh, it's nice out. It's actually really nice out. Um, but I wanted to talk to you guys about a really strange and weird dream that I have had multiple times. So, as far as I can recall, the first time I had it, I was in like first grade. It was one of the, uh, it was actually my second move. I grew up in a little town, well, I was born in a little town called Las Cruces, New Mexico. It's a very small town. It's actually where a lot of my parents' family, both my mom's side and my dad's side, where they live currently, there's a lot of family down in Las Cruces, and the El Paso, Texas area. Well, four, no, not four, six years old, I moved to El Paso, Texas. I was there for about a year, and at seven, first grade, I moved back to New Mexico, but to another city called Alamogordo. They have a cool space museum. It's not far from a cool place called White Sands, which is really neat. Just like a big, huge desert of white sand. Uh, and there's neat stuff up there, but I specifically remember having this dream the first time in Alamogordo once I lived there. So I was in like first grade. And I remember I slept in my bed differently. I put my head where my feet would be, and my feet were where my head normally is. And I had <laughs> a weird, really weird crazy dream and maybe if any of you guys are into that like dream research where you can like find out what people's dreams mean maybe you guys can give me some insight as to what this means because i've never looked into it i mean this was 1990 <laughs> so we're going on 25 years ago here comes a plane there's the plane hello plane but are you done are you done <laughs> But we're going on 25 years ago, I had this dream. 25 years. And it still kind of bugs me because I don't know what it means. If it means anything at all, it might not mean anything. But then it might mean a lot. I don't know. You guys, if you guys know, please tell me because I'm really curious. But, okay, dream is this. It's a really weird dream because it's not like your normal dream. I didn't wake up at school with no underwear or something like that. I dreamt that my face was, actually this is a good example right here. There's a little wall right here. So see this wall? There's a wall right here. I dreamt I was asleep and my face was really close to a wall. Like it was a wall in my bedroom, right? Like seriously, like an inch away. But when I stared at the wall and I tried to reach for it, it was like a million miles away. I couldn't get to the wall like it basically like I knew it was only an inch away like I knew the distance was an inch but I was able to feel what it felt like to be like a molecule or something like that that's the best way I can describe it is it's kind of like what it felt like to be an atom or a molecule was there was this infinite space between me and that wall though I knew it was really only an inch let's let that plane go by uh, but though I knew it was only about an inch or so away, I could feel miles and miles between me 
and that wall as if I was the size of a molecule, like so super tiny. And it was strange because then the dream got weirder as if that like, you know, kind of, I guess a cut, like in a movie, just cut to a piece of clay, like a string of clay, probably about the size of a twig, maybe. Okay, see this? I don't want to get any bugs or anything, but see this? Probably about this thick, maybe a little bit thicker in between my fingers. A, th a string of clay about that thick, maybe a little, maybe more like this thick, where the uh, branch kind of hits, a little bit thicker. So, a string of clay, like, I, guess, I don't know if it was on a table or floating or what, but I went to grab this string of clay, right, that was super thin, it was about that big. I went to grab it and roll it between my fingers, because I knew it was clay for some reason. It was solid, but it was mushy. But so I went to go grab it and roll it, and it felt about as thick as a Coke can, like this. But I could see it like this. I was like, I, why does it feel like I'm grabbing a, something really thick and big when it's really only this big? And then vice versa happened. There was another piece of clay all of a sudden. I don't know if it was like kind of Alice in Wonderland. It just tripped out and changed or something. I don't know. It was weird. Again, I was in first grade. But then I see a piece of clay, a very thick cylinder of clay. It's like brown or maybe gray in color i can't really tell because dream colors and dreams are never just like how you remember them i don't know maybe who knows but it was very thick like a coke can and i went to grab it and it like immediately shrunk to the size of that like spaghetti little the smaller one and it was like oh almost i remember it being like a toothpick it all of a sudden felt like as thin as a toothpick solid sharp like a toothpick and I was like, what? That was a giant can. And when I went to grab for it, it was as big as a toothpick. And I remember feeling the toothpick and thinking, like, it looks like a can, but it feels like a toothpick. And then going back to that wall in the infinite space between me and the wall. And it just felt like miles and miles and miles. Um, and it was a weird dream because it wasn't scary. Well, it was a little scary because nothing was as it seemed. But, you know, for a first grader, for being, what, eight, nine years old, I don't know how old I was, I think it was eight, maybe, yeah, maybe eight, um, it was a lot to take in, but it's one of those things that, like, it's kind of followed me here and there, um, I used to do a lot of, when I lived in New Mexico, I used to do a lot of walking around the desert, hanging out with friends, doing crazy things in high school, um, having a lot of spiritual talks, if you will, uh, going on crazy journeys in the middle of nowhere. And we would talk about stuff like this, about, huh, there's another plane. Not, we wouldn't talk about planes, but we would talk about, like, these crazy things in our dreams and kind of what they are just weird things about how, like, the infinity of space, like, I had this theory once that, and it's very similar to, like, a Big Bang theory, um, is that the entire universe is just a match. You know, when you light a match, you strike the match and you light it, and it explodes and flares up and goes away. The match is a pre, it's like a piece of wood, and it's got some chemical, whatever junk it is on the outside that explodes when given friction, right? So the universe was tiny, a piece of mass, is gonna get interrupted by a plane now, but it's this matchstick, right? This is my fist, a matchstick. And the Big Bang itself was the match being lit. I really could have done this somewhere better, <laughs> but either way, I'm walking around an empty parking lot, so it's kind of cool. Um, so the matchstick, as it's lit, is the expansion. Now, as those chemicals on the tip of the match head burn, they become something different. They're now smoke. They're now spiraling and moving around. They're sparks, which is what galaxies are. They're all these really crazy, like, whooshy sparks and stuff. I'm going to switch hands here. Um... And that's what that is. That's what galaxies are. That's what the Milky Way is. It's just one of those little sparks. Like, like, go, right now, go get a match. Light it and really look at it up close. And see all the different little things that come off it as you light it. Because uh, you'll see those things. You'll see those, like, little, you know, the little sparks. You'll see that chemical. It's no longer the red or the green or whatever, the white little tip, whatever the hell it is. Oh, sorry, whatever it is. Um, it's no longer that. It becomes something different. And that's kind of what happens in space, right? Where we're talking about planets, uh, where it was once gas floating around. That gas kind of picked up, globbed together, became solids, started to form planets. Now, again, this is all just in theory. No one really knows for sure, but 
Um, I mean, they have very, very educated guesses. Uh, but yeah, I mean, so those gases clumped together, became solid, started to form planets, so on and so forth. But I also have this other theory dealing with the way time moves is that the bigger you are, the slower time is, and the smaller you are, the faster time is, right? So we take like molecules, like things of like tiny little ants, I guess. Let's say for an ant, life is very quick. Everything moves so fast, really quick. But for someone who would say be a giant or even a planet, movement is always so slow. Things in space happening far, far away, really large, huge, humongous. It always moves so slow. But things that are smaller move so quickly. Those little, the neutrons, protons, electrons that make up those little atoms and molecules and all that good stuff, they move so quickly that we can barely even keep track. And for all we know, the stuff that we know about isn't even like, <laughs> you know, as far, like, as far as what we've figured out with science in the last couple hundred years, we don't even know if that's just the tip of the iceberg. It may go further. And we just haven't figured it out yet because as humans, we haven't gotten that technology. We haven't, we're not there yet. We don't know. And it all kind of ties together with my crazy weird dream of things not necessarily being what you thought they were. There's another plane. I thought that was a plane. Also, it's a plane. But it just kind of, it, it's one of those things, it's like a dream that I had when I was little. And I said I had it multiple times, so I had the dream that we're crazy an inch is a million miles, which if I was a molecule, it would be. And I actually, um, I'm going to get off on a tangent here, like I always do. But there's an episode of uh, Adventure Time. I don't know if any of you guys watch Adventure Time. But it was one where Finn puts on these glasses. And all of a sudden, like, it goes into his brain, and he gets, like, super smart. And as he puts them on, he, like, he yells, like, everything big is just everything small all over again. And he, like, figures out the whole world instantly. And I was like, that's absolutely right. Like, the way things happen at such a small little scale are the same, like, if you look at them, the same as it's happening up in space. And it's all very, like, it's all very similar and kind of tied together. And I'm not saying, like, it's all, it's all exactly the same. We're all a bunch of crazy just replication and crazy stuff over and over. But if you look at, like, geometry stuff like fractals and Mandelbrot set, and you see how things replicate over and over, it just makes you think a little bit. Like, what exactly is everything? What is everything? And, like, I was trying to get to before I got off on the tangent with the fractals and everything. Um... The dream I had multiple times. So I had it the first time I slept differently. The next time, like months later, because I only lived in Alamogordo for a year, months later, I changed my sleeping again. I changed, you know, I swapped it up again. And that same time I swapped it up, I had the same dream. Weird, peculiar, right? I was in a different thing. I don't know what was going on, but I had the same dream. Again, when I moved back to El Paso, Texas, I remember the first night, again, this was like 90. 93 now. I think 92 because it was the beginning of second grade for me. I'm an old man. Um, but at this point, I had the dream again in a different place. But again, when I changed my sleeping, and I remember I didn't have the dream again for a while. But later, when I moved to Oklahoma City, I remember one of my first, it wasn't exactly the first night, but it was one of the first few nights that I slept there. I had the dream again. And it was very, it wasn't necessarily like verbatim the exact same dream plane but it was a very very similar it was the same it was the same dream but not exactly the same order you know it was still that same feeling because the dream itself wasn't like a visual thing so much happening as much as it was feelings it was these feelings of things that are tiny are way bigger and things that are bigger can actually be tiny and that space that looks a certain amount is actually much larger than we think it is and it's just one of these weird perspective things. It kind of just makes you think. But if you guys have any insight at all as to what that dream means, what that, like, what any of that means, does it mean I'm a crazy person? Does it mean I'm a big weirdo who had crazy dreams at a young age? Does it make me a super genius? I think it does. Maybe it does. We're all super geniuses in our own way. Um, 
I guess I'm a crazy person. I'm walking around a parking lot, almost midnight, talking to a camera. Well, I'm talking to you guys. I'm just a camera. <laughs> you guys are in there. Thank you, by the way, so much for watching, all of you. Every time you guys leave those comments, I really do. I read them. I said this before. I get excited. I see them. And there's some of you who have been commenting consistently. And oh my god, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love having people to talk to on the internet about crazy stuff. And I want to know your input. I want to know, what do you guys think? Um, like I warned you in the beginning of the month, this whole VEDA thing is going to get personal. It's going to get weird. It's going to get crazy. It wasn't just going to be Dano painting shoes anymore. It was going to be me talking about my life experiences. About me talking about my crazy weird theories. About things. It's... It's everything. It's just, it's just fun. It's actually... It's really... It's fun. And it's neat for me to be able to just... Bleh, all this stuff out. To a camera. is a safe place for me. Where I can put it out. I don't have any trolls. No YouTube trolls yet people to be like, you're stupid, shut up, and give me negative energy. Everyone around here at the Dano channel, my audience has been giving me nothing but positive vibes, and I appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Seriously, I'm doing this because you guys have made it awesome for me to do this. Otherwise, I'd be like, this is a bad place. Plain. <laughs> but, you know, otherwise I'd be like, this is not good. This is not so best. Guys, I appreciate all of you. I really do love you. Let me know what your weirdest dream was. If you guys have a weird, crazy dream, and you feel like sharing. If you don't feel like sharing, fair enough. Mine was a little crazy. But if you have a weird dream, or even a recurring dream that you've had multiple times, leave it down below. Let me know. And one last thing before I go, because this is a long VEDA vlog. It's like a VEDA part two. It's kind of making up for me not doing VEDAs the last couple days, because I was busy with vacation. Um, but one more thing I want to add is one of my favorite movies ever, ever. It's a movie called Waking Life by Richard Linklater. Uh, the same guy who did Boyhood, if any of you heard about Boyhood recently. That was his biggest hit. He also did Days Infused, Fast Food Nation, Suburbia. A lot of my favorite movies are Richard Linklater movies. Uh, the Before Midnight, Before Sunset, After Midnight, you know, that trilogy with Jesse and whatever her name is. Um... Either way, link later. The movie Waking Life, it's beautiful. It's a really cool movie about dreams. And I have to tell you, if you've never seen Waking Life, go to iTunes or your local whatever store. I don't know where. Download it. It's on iTunes. It's definitely on iTunes. Like, just rent it. Maybe it's on Netflix. I don't know. But look for it. It's called Waking Life, directed by, written and directed by Richard Linklater. It is all about dreams. It is about dreams consciousness, where we are, it's a bunch of crazy weird stuff, but I really, I feel like everybody should watch it, it is like one of my, it's all time favorite movie, all time favorite movie, like hands down beats any Disney movie ever, they recorded it live action and they painted over it so it looks like a crazy weird cartoon, seriously best movie ever, watch it, let me know what you think after you watch it, tweet at me, hit me up on the Instagrams, at Dano Flores. Give me a thumbs up if you like talking about crazy weird dreams. Give me a thumbs up if you like planes. There's a plane. Planes. <laughs> I really could have picked a better place for this. But yeah, give me a thumbs up for any reason. If you like seeing me ramble like this for 20 minutes, if you've stuck around this long, thank you. But I want to hear about your dreams. I want to know if you've seen that movie. What did you think about the movie? Because it's seriously my favorite movie. And, yeah, just what's going on. Let me know how you guys are doing. Let me know what you want to see next. And I'll see you guys in the next VEDA video. Vlogging every day in April on purpose. It should be VEDA OP on purpose. Because, unfortunately, once this is over, I'm not going to be doing this everyday stuff. I might chime in with a little me more personally here and there. Because some of you seem to like it. And that gets me right in the feels. To know that people are paying attention and like it. That's really cool. Right in the feels. But thank you guys so much. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Bloop. I'm standing in Cinderella's shower.